Hi everyone, I am Kumar. Welcome to today's video. Let's get set and learn. Today we will be learning about exception handling in Java. Today we will see difference between errors and ex exceptions and we will see types of exceptions. We will see what is throwable class and we will see how to catch exceptions. And finally we will also see how to create your own exceptions. Okay, this is the agenda for today's class. Let's start. First, let's understand why do we need to learn exception handling. So exception handling is crucial because it helps us manage exception gracefully. So what 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 do we mean by gracefully? It will not break the flow of your code or it will not your it will not stop your applications. So if you handle your exceptions, it will not stop your applications. Okay. Now let's start with understanding difference between errors and exceptions. So errors. So errors are serious issues. Okay. So errors are serious issues. That means you cannot handle it. So if uh, if such errors happen, your code will stop. Got it? So for example, out of memory error. So whenever you're running a code and it is it is going out of memory error, you can't handle it, right? Because once it has gone out of memory error, what can you do? Your code will stop. Such issues are called errors. Okay. What is exception? Exceptions are not so serious. So these these are kind of issues mostly occur because of your logic what you have written in your code. Okay? For example, you are reading a file, but you have entered the file name wrong. That file does not exist. That means it is not like an error that uh, will stop your program. You can handle it and if the file does not exist, you can run some other part of the code so that your program can gracefully close and you can see the error properly. Okay? So now let's see examples to understand this exception first let's understand types of exception there are two types of exception unchecked exceptions and checked exceptions okay so now the hierarchy is there are two types of issues errors and exceptions and in exceptions there are two types unchecked and checked exceptions okay so the, this uh, in java there is a co class called throwable so i will show that uh, when we are going into the uh, example example file, I'll show this throwable class. So this throwable class is super class of all errors and exception. Okay. So this is a super class of all error and exception. Okay. So what what this class contains? Majorly it contains um, so many functionalities, but majorly it contains get message. That means it it will show that error message it will return the text error message and print stack trace so if you get some error you can use this print stack trace to show how uh, your code has been progressed and where the errors have been caught so the stack trace you can see okay so this is about throwable class inside this throwable class there are two classes that extends this error and exception error are the class is a super class of all errors out of memory error, stack overflow error, all those things. Exception is a super class of all exceptions. It may be IO exception, file not found exception, arithmetic ex exception, all these exceptions. Okay. So in exception, there are two types, unchecked exception and checked exception. So this is the hierarchy, throwable, throwable error and exception extends throwable. And in exception, there are two types, unchecked exceptions and checked exceptions. Let's see that checked exceptions. These are the exceptions that are checked in compile time. and what is unchecked? These are not checked in compile time. That means these are checked in runtime. These are checked in runtime. Okay. So when you compile your code, let's say, so for checked exceptions, when you compile your code, these exceptions are checked. And if your function, let's say, is not throwing that exception, it will show compilation error. So while compiling itself, it will give an error that there is some issue with how you define the exception. Maybe your not throwing that exception or something like that. But for un unchecked exceptions, this won't happen. Okay. Now let's see uh, our. I'll create a Java file. Exception, exception handling. Okay. Okay. Our main main function. So first, let's see throwable class. This is this was our throwable class. Now if you just click, you can see public public class throwable. Okay. And it contains get message and also print stack trace. Okay, so these are the two main methods. It does some other things as well, but these are the two main methods you should know. Now, now what what we'll see, we'll see exception. Okay, this exception class. So you can see it extends throwable. 
So it is uh, derived from throwable only. So it also has inherited from throwable. So we have seen inheritance, right? So this is that exception class. Now let's see error class. So error also extends from throwable. Okay. Now let's see some error out of memory error. Okay. This is an error. You can see out of memory error is extended from virtual machine error. So this means any machine error for any resources that we run out and that extends this error class. So these error are the ones we have seen that we it is there is no use of handling them because you cannot handle them also. Okay. Now now let's see some exception. Okay. First let's see IO exception. Okay. If you see IO exception, it is uh, derived. It is inherited from exception only. It's not derived. Inherited. Inherited is the right word. Now let's next let let's see runtime exception. This is a runtime exception or exception that are checked during runtime. So all unchecked exception should will extend this runtime exception. Or other exception which are uh, like IO exception which I have given that does not extend runtime exceptions are called checked exceptions. So all those are checked exceptions. Whatever exception that extends this runtime exception that is called unchecked exceptions. Okay. So we'll see one example of unchecked exception arithmetic exception. So this is called this is caused when we do some there is some issue with arithmetic thing. So it extends runtime exception you can see. Okay. I think uh, we have seen some examples of exception and how this hierarchy of exception error throwable all these things right now let's do something. So the first example whenever we uh, do exception handling we see is divide by zero. So let's tr try that. Let's try int a is equal to 10 int p is equal to zero and system dot out dot print ln a divided by b okay what it is telling division by zero some of this uh, id is able to catch that we are divided dividing by zero but let's print what happens okay process finished what it is showing exception in thread main java lang arithmetic exception so this is because we are dividing by zero so this is that message and it is showing that full like trace where it is happening it is happening at this line number seven in exception handling dot java file and this is happening in main function that is the main function what is the exception arithmetic exception so this is how it is printed okay now let's see now let's catch this error we'll see how to catch this so to catch exception in any code block you have to put that code block in try what does this mean this means that you try whatever you want in this block you can try whatever you want and you can catch whatever you want. So let's catch this arithmetic exception. Arithmetic exception E. You can give a name E and you can just print system dot out dot print ln E dot E. Let's say. Okay. Now let's see what happens. Okay. Now you are not getting that complete message. Some stack trace. That was a default message that will be printed when you are uh, when like it, the whole stack trace is getting printed when the exception is not until but you are when you are catching that exception and printing that error only then this is printed okay now but you just want this message to be printed you don't want this what you can do you can do e dot get message we, we have seen that throwable implement this you will just get the message see division by zero okay i think uh, now you understood how to catch an exception okay or what you can do so you can see that now error we are not getting some exception. The code is completed. So you are handling that exception. You are just printing that error. Or what you can do, you can just write system dot out dot print ln. Please retry and input number which is not zero. Something like this. So what you have done here, you know when someone divides by zero, you get an arithmetic exception. But you can you have catch that arithmetic exception and told no don't fail you do whatever i want to do here okay so this is how you catch there is one more block in this that is called finally block so what you can do is system dot out dot print ln this will always execute so what this finally does so even if you don't get exception or even if you get exception this finally will execute so once you get exception some exception is catch and you are doing something finally will execute well, why is this important because this sometimes you want you have opened a file but you got some error what this finally will do this will help you to close that file some database connection is open and it will help you to close the database connection if you don't close the data connections the database will be live and it won't be closed okay so uh, this will always execute finally block now what we'll do let's create a function and do this let's create static void 
add static void int add int a comma int t now not add let's say divide return a divided by b now instead of doing this here you just write divide a comma b okay now let's do this okay you can see division by zero is printed please retry and input the number which is not zero and finally is also printed this will always execute okay understood but what it is telling return value of the method is never used okay that that, that you can ignore for now okay now what we can do try let's say we want to handle it here okay catch arithmetic exception e so now you, if you want to throw this again okay you can just throw new exception you have catch that arithmetic exception and you want your own custom message you don't want this division by zero you can do throw new exception and write your own message so what what are we doing throw throw means it will throw this exception instead of arithmetic we are catching here it will throw this new exception this is ex this is exception class we have seen right division by zero let's say you want this message okay what it is telling error add exception to method signature okay so if you don't throw if you just do throw exception if there is a function you are declaring and it is throwing some exception you need to declare throws that exception if you don't do this it won't run so if you'll just do this and if you just run it'll telling java.lang must be caught or declared to be thrown this is what is called so this exception right Com in compile time itself it is finding that you are throwing some exception but that is that that is not being caught or declared to be thrown so whenever you declare uh, whenever you throw an exception you must declare that this function will be throwing that exception or else wherever you are calling that will not know that this function will throw some exception and you will not be able to catch that exception so you have to declare throws exception unreported exception java exception must be caught or declared to be thrown okay so here also this this we know that divide will throw an exception but here we haven't told that it is throwing an exception okay so if you just do like this this will run it is telling exception in main thread division by zero so we have just caught that arithmetic exception we haven't caught this so to catch this if you want to do multiple catch let's say you can do something like this catch exception and you can print system dot this okay now you don't want now you see this is grayed out now you don't want to throw this because you have already caught that so either you catch the exception or you throw the exception that means java is telling either you handle the exception or at least let other uh, function whichever which will be using this function know that you some exception is thrown either you catch it or you can also throw back so you can see division by zero and this will always equal so you can do multiple exception handling like this but this order is important so if in the divide if i don't mention something like this if i just remove this and if i just comment this and remove this let's say and if you run you will see this will get printed okay so if uh, like the this order is important first it will check whether the exception you have thrown exception that has come is arithmetic exception or not if it is not arithmetic exception it will check if it is exception or not okay but if what what will happen if you do something like this okay it is showing some error so it is telling this exception is already been caught because why because arithmetic exception extends this exception so it doesn't make sense you to catch this because this will never be executed always this will be executed that's why this order is very very important okay i think now it's clear now let's run and let's uncomment this so what what is the error here it is showing throws exception this is very important you have to do this okay division by zero this will always execute so i think now exception handling is clear why why are we doing exception handling because so you know this divide will do something uh, division by zero is not acceptable what you can do you can catch those exception and do something of your own what you can do here you can do just uh, you can do something like this even b equals 1 and just return a something like this so what this will do you have handled that exception you are not allowing a, a divided by b and you are not allowing your system to 
your application to close. Okay. So close in the sense uh, it will stop that flow. Whatever is present below that won't execute. Now, if you see, you have handled this right, and if you write system dot out dot print ln hi, let's say, okay, and you can see hi is also printed. So that means the program flow hasn't stopped. This is printing, but now if you if you don't catch, let's say, just I'm commenting this and doing divide a comma b, okay, and we have to do this throws exception. Okay, now if you do this. Everything failed, even high is not printed. So your flow is get your code is getting stopped. So if you handle exception, you can you you will you will be able to run the full code, you will be able to run the full application, and you are handling the errors, exceptions. Okay, this is what exception handling is all about. Because like most of the time when you develop, you know what are the possible things that can go wrong in your application. So let's say uh, you are expecting in this function input a and b, but someone can put zero. So you know that some bad entries can come, and you have to handle that as an exception. So uh, in like Java has provided many exceptions for generic use case, but some of the time those exception might not be present. For example, let's say it is your business. Okay, you are running a business. Some business domain exception, like uh, uh, the user ID. So your input is user ID, but someone has put negative user ID uh, in your function. So let's say you have a function static int get user ID, and your input is user ID. So I'm just giving a use case. It's not just you return user ID, but you want to get user id you want to check whether if it is user id is valid or not okay if user is valid okay of user id you want to do something like this okay but is valid is in is valid what you want to do static is valid okay of int user id you have to define the type boolean okay now Sorry, in you have to do brackets like this. Okay. Now this get user ID. In if in is valid, you can check if user ID if user ID is less than zero. You can say throw new exception. User ID cannot be less than zero. Else else return true true. Okay. So this is what you want to do. If someone enters, you throw this exception that user ID cannot be less than zero, or else return true. So if the user ID is valid, it will return true. Why is this showing exception? We have just seen we have not handled it. So you can do throws exception. Okay, throws exception. Now the only problem in this whole code is, let's say you are doing something like this: return user ID divided by zero. In some way so this code can throw two exceptions one if user id is less than zero two this divide by zero will throw an exception okay now you are if you are doing this generic exception class throws you will never know why your code failed because you are the multiple exceptions can be thrown you will never know why why your code failed that's why we want to create our custom exception so that the user who are using our application or ourselves can handle that particular exception properly. Okay. So how to create your custom application? Let's create a class custom exception. Let's say what you have to do first you have to do is extends exception. This is very, very important. Now one thing you have to override is public get message. So you are overriding super dot get message string okay no 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 not this sorry give me a moment so sorry you have to write your own constructor custom exception string message and you have to do super message so th th this if you just do this that means your ex you have created your own exception now what you can do here instead of throwing this you can throw your 
own exception import class you just have to import the class jar or dot jar dot you have imported your exception now throw this exception now instead of do this throw throws this throws this okay now if someone is using this get user id if custom exception is thrown they know that it is it is because the user id was less than 0 but if arithmetic exception is thrown they will know that it is because some division by 0 has happened so this is the use case of why we need custom exception let's see uh, let us understand few more benefits of custom custom exception so custom exception helps to convey specific error conditions so this is what we have seen that user id cannot be less than 0 so sometimes some of the exceptions are not covered by java even these exceptions you can define as your own custom exception and throw them okay also one more thing custom exception allows for more precise error handling so this will help you to catch very very specific exceptions and handle based on that so you can do something like multiple uh, exception like ca catching and on each of these specific exception you can do you can change your code to handle them on in your own way and sometimes custom exception can represent business logic okay so some business logic or some error so here it was like user id so you can instead of giving throwing this some custom exception you can rename it as invalid user id exception so this this will clearly tell that some user id was invalid and because of that this happened you can just rename this invalid user id exception and just go into your file and just rename this to invalid user id exception invalid user id exception invalid user id so this will be very clear that uh, some in user is user id is invalid and that's why this exception is coming so what it will help custom exception will help you to like uh, create your own exception with meaningful name also so you can give a proper name so that user can understand if some error is happening or oh, this is because of this thing something like that i hope exception handling is clear now what we have seen so first we have seen difference between error and exception error are like you can't handle the errors and exceptions you can handle next we have seen unchecked and checked exceptions unchecked exceptions are one that are checked during runtime checked exceptions are, are one that are checked during compile time okay next we have seen throwable class that is a super class of all error and exception class under throwable error and exception comes under exception we have runtime exception which is super class of all runtime exceptions and all other exceptions are checked exceptions so this is what we have seen and then we saw some code example how to catch exceptions try catch and final finally keyword and we have also seen how to create your own custom exception okay that's all folks for today thank you for joining